Do you want to give your 3D printer a festive treat this Christmas? Well, this is the Christmas Lattice Torture Test. I designed it last year and released it to the public for you guys to try print it on your machines. And it is devious. So in this video, I tested this file against four of my 3D printers with wildly different results. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. I hope you're having a fantastic festive season with your family and friends, eating lots of turkey and having a jolly old time. As I mentioned, this is my Christmas lattice torture test. Designed it last year as a variation on my ever popular torture cube series. Long time subscribers to Makers Muse will remember this. This was the original lattice cube I designed back in 2016 and it's designed to be really challenging for an FDM 3D printer to reproduce because it has so many points it has to move between, it's easy to knock it over. Start to this, I made uh, this version, which is rotated around twice. And then for the Christmas that year, I made this version, which is the snowflake lattice. This one has a very tiny point and goes out. This version is gorgeous because it's printed on an SLA 3D printer, a Form 2, which I wish I still had, but it's the best ever version of this file I've printed. Obviously it's a different technology where it's easier, but on FDM, printing these things is pretty challenging. So last year I made the Christmas version, which is a Christmas tree inspired lattice. And it's even harder than this one because the overhangs in some areas are steeper, but then they branch into really nasty directional changes that tends to get caught up in the nozzle and break them over. So what machines did I test these Christmas tree lattices on? First was the original Prusa Mark III. I reviewed that machine at the start of the year and I've been printing many, many things on my Prusa Mark III. They've gone through various firmware updates and slicer updates. And I thought a torch lattice would be a really good way to stress test that machine and see how far the Prusa Mark III has come from its kind of rocky release. Then going back even further in time, I decided to throw the print at my Wanhao i3, which was actually the rebranded Cocoon Create, the first machine sold in the Aldi supermarkets. That's right, we had 3D printers in Aldi supermarkets in Australia back in 2016, and they've since brought out many 3D printers. This is a retail store where you can just go and buy groceries and pick up a 3D printer. I've done heavy modifications to that machine, and it's not in the best condition as you'll see in the results, but it can still print flexibles very well with the Flexion extruder I modded, and I did a whole sort of pimp my printer thing on Makers Muse Live, and it does still have a bit further to go, but it was really fun bringing that old thing back out to see how it compares with my more recent 3D printers. Then we had the Ender 3. I actually tested the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro as part of my review, which I tried to film today, but we don't have internet, so I can't get the, the script to work, whatever. But the Ender 3 Pro is very similar to the Ender 3, it just has a few, uh, few, few component changes, and I really wanted to see what the difference that made to this very challenging print. And finally, we have the baby of the lineup, the Cetus Mark II. I do have a Cetus Mark III on the way where they've changed a lot of things, but this little machine is really, really neat. I really quite like it. It's small, compact, Wi-Fi, no interface, but it's pretty much PLA only. But man, it's good at printing lattices, let me tell you that. So let's get into the first one, the Prusa Mark III. So the first shot in the Prusa Mark III ended in spaghetti. This is where the Christmas lattice tree tends to fail. This first elbow joint is where it starts getting caught up and it's really challenging for a 3D printer to reproduce with FDM technology. So I can actually see the point where it got caught uh, here, 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 and then eventually just broke it off the bed and made a little, little nest of noodles. Uh, so that's usually how far people get. So don't be disheartened if this is your result, watch the print because it's, you don't want to leave this going to the top when it's failed. Uh, but if this happens, you probably want Z height uh, retraction. So that's where the printer will actually lift Z hop and actually move around. And once I sorted all of that out and tried again and added a uh, brim to ensure it was stuck down nicely, then this is my results. So this is on the 0.15 millimeter layer height. All of these were at 1.15 and that's pretty nice. Going up the print, you can see a little bit of stringing, and as it gets to the top, there's less time for it to cool, so a little bit more stringing to the point, but really, you cannot complain with this result of the Prusa Mark III. 
it is very, very nice. And even the elbow joints where it failed before, the brim added a lot of stability and they're actually quite clean as well. The overhangs don't have too much of a messy finish. I also need to mention the filament I used is this silver PLA, which comes with the Prusa machines. I wanted something consistent across all tests and this one worked pretty well printing at around 200, 210 degrees. Next we had the Cocoon Create, or as what many of you guys will know it as the Wanhao i3 version two, with a lot of modifications. This printer really is showing its age. I think the belts are just not very tight anymore. It all needs a good lubrication and tensioning, and the Flexion metal really uh, is good for high temperature, but isn't fantastic for PLA, I'll be honest and the results really do show that. Also cooling, that's the biggest thing letting me down. The cooling fan that's stock on the Wanhao i3s is just really inadequate and that, that you can really see that the parts, the layers haven't cooled enough, they've dripped down. It is a direct drive extruder so it doesn't have the same amount of, extra, of issues with stringing that a Bowden would, but nonetheless it does have stringing towards the top just because of that cooling, it wasn't adequate to stop the plastic from oozing between each joint. So this is the worst of the lineup. Even though it didn't fail, the finish is really, really rough. So you can do it, but uh, my machine clearly needs a lot of tweaks and love to get it back up and running. This point's actually really interesting. It's failed, but then like rejoined. Yeah. <laughs> but keep in mind, most printers on the market today still wouldn't even be able to finish this. So not too bad for a machine back in the start of a uh, Started of 2016, quite a while ago. Then we have the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. I was really interested to see if the Pro added anything to the printing quality. That is important if you're paying $60 US more than the Ender 3, but unfortunately not. These are the two prints. This one is on the Ender 3, and this is on the Ender 3 Pro. Yeah, they both failed kind of in the same area where they knocked down these bars, but, um, the finish on the Ender 3 vs Pro, the Ender 3 looks better, even though it's knocked those bars down. Why does it look better? Well, it has the Capricorn tubing. I really don't like the extruder design on these machines, and the PTFE internal diameter seems to have a huge effect on removing the stringing. So this is actually a really clean result for a machine that has that, that, that price, and it's just really funny that it recovered, actually. Um, but it did fail, it did knock this part over. You can clearly see where it's caught. This is where you'd want to implement Z-hop, you know, where it jumps up on the Z-height, and that adds more stringing uh, in my tests on the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. So the print with the Capricorn's better than the one without, um, but both still kind of failed, unfortunately. So if you have an Ender 3, um, Replace the tubing, I think, is the moral of the story here, and you might need to use Z-Hop to make sure it clears those bars and doesn't catch, knock them over, and uh, do what my tests did. Okay, there's only one left in the lineup, and that would be the Cetus Mark II. This machine, I don't know, it just, it isn't sexy, so it hasn't gained a lot of widespread appeal because it doesn't have an interface and it's PLA only with a non-heated bed. But look, I, I keep mentioning it in my videos, it prints like a boss. This is the result of the Christmas tree lattice on the Cetus Mark II. And it's actually scaled down slightly because the print volume isn't as large as the other machines I've tested. This is only about 170 millimeters high and it is fantastic. Perhaps not as clean, interestingly enough, as the Ender 3's outside details in some areas, but the actual um, cooling is so good on the, on the Cetus Mark II that there is no stringing. I have not touched this up at all. There is something I do want to point out, is some areas there's under extrusion. And what happened after this print is my 0.4 nozzle on the Cetus Mark II failed, and I replaced it. So I think that's why it's so bad. I haven't really run into this before on this machine and after this as I said it just kind of stopped working so either it's full of dust and clogged or it was just had its had its due time but yeah the Cetus one even though it's a little bit rough at the top is probably the best in the lineup and it's on a tiny machine that yeah it's just continues to impress me actually so there you go guys wildly different results 
of the same file on my various printers here on Makers Muse. If you want to try the Christmas lattice torch test yourself, you can find the link below. It's completely free on Gumroad, or you can send a donation, completely optional. And please share your results with me on Twitter at Makers Muse. I would love to see how you handle this. And if you did enjoy this video on Makers Muse, guys, please consider subscribing. It is my aim to empower your creativity. I've had a blast printing these models and I hope you have a fantastic, safe and enjoyable festive season. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.